live from the heat blasted <laughs> surface of Arrakis. It's the Geek Show. Is that why it's so hot in here? I wondered why it was so hot in <laughs> I know at least uh, three of you have seen Dune 2, and you'll get that review on this week's episode. Go. <laughs> I wish I was one of those three. So do I. Oh, well, let's then only two Tony, of us. I'm only two of you have shocked. Now. I thought you went, Tony. I thought. I, I wanted to, but he has conditions. Life, life came in the way, got in the way, and uh, I have, I have special, I have a certain set of conditions that the, the timing of the movie and the location need to meet. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm a sound, diva when it comes to my movie watching. You sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> An absolute diva. He's quad T, too tall, Tony. Big time diva. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Geek Show Arcade, Geek Show Help Desk for all your video game and gadget needs. That's right. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's Rebecca Frost, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, sorry for no new Space Show show this week. We took a break due to an illness uh, that I caught from the holodeck. So it's all <laughs> right. <laughs> went, in, went in after Riker's minuet program. Wait, that that it's makes disgusting. it sound like I caught an STD. When, <laughs> when really, people were just licking doorknobs. A lot of it's trombone <laughs> stuff going on in yeah. there. Wow, wow. Those digital STDs, they're the worst, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, they never go away. Uh, he's never had a digital STD. He's Meatball O'Reilly. No, I, it's Lee George Kate, everybody. <laughs> Star Star Trek disorder? I what's well, STDs? Oh, that's Star us. Trek disorder. We'll yeah, I got it. an STD. Star yeah. Trek disorder. I right. sure. Well, I'm so glad that I came to hang out with you guys on the Space Show show for season three because, oh my, it's like <laughs> I'm remembering all the things that made me love Star Trek in the first place. It's like when you run into your ex and you think how wonderful, but instead of saying, "Oh, now I remember why I hate my ex," now you're like, oh, "I think maybe my ex is cool." What? Well, Just I broke up with, with I broke up with Next Gen decades ago because I felt like it was half miss, half hit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm realizing it's way more hit. Than it's miss. more so hit than miss. Yeah. Thank you, you so much, Rebecca, for welcome. Space Show Show. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a revelation. <laughs> hello, <laughs> Rob. Hello, Rob. How are you? Speaking of revelations, <laughs> doing well, thank you. How are you? Oh, holiness. <laughs> that Pope. <laughs> Robert Neal is here. Uh, let's see. Uh, and our host. Don't forget our host. Marwa Jackson. Oh, <laughs> Monday, <Gary through, laughs> Jackson. Monday through Friday, 6 to 10, x96.com for now. All right. The, the carry short for Carewood. Yes. Right. Kerwood. Carewood Underwood. Oh, sorry. Yes. My accent got in the way it's again. It's fine. It's fine. I, I forgive you. <laughs> All right. Let's begin. With a visual for our YouTube viewers, but if you're listening on the podcast, just look up this picture. Um, it's uh, the Crow reboot. Okay. So, yeah, that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look up look up the picture of uh, Bill Skarsgård and his Jokerified look for the crow. I respectfully picked this picture instead of the one that showed his full abs. You oh. are, guys are welcome. <laughs> well, you, you, you could have picked the full abs one. I mean, you know. Oh, oh okay. Well, that'll, right. that'll, 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 maybe it'll fine. drive up traffic of our... Uh, on our, on our YouTube. Well, you're going to have to name the episode Bill Skarsgård's Abs so people know, you know, what to look true. for. That's so. true. All right. Put that out there. Dim abs. I saw uh, old man Skarsgård's abs. Cause... So. Hey, there you go. How there about? we go. So. Perverts. Um, <laughs> it's kinda, he looks kind of sickly. Uh, I need my comic nerds. Uh, James O'Barr's comic book came out when? 1992. Was it yes. that early? Yes. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm throwing shit out. No, I, no, it's about right. It was is that yeah. about right? Within he's within three or four years, one way or the other. Yeah, I didn't realize I had a first edition. Um, oh. I I just took a bunch of stuff out to uh, Gray Whale. It's a local used, you know, uh, record store and bookstore. 1989, by the way. And oh. 89. Thank you. And they three. And yep. they called me back and said, you know, this is this is a first run. This is a first edition. Do you want it back? And I went, no. <laughs> well, they probably gave you like 15 cents for it. They probably, they, I know I didn't get what it was worth. But anyway, um, so the movie, though, was 30 years ago, 94. Maybe that's what you were thinking. Um, this is the original movie. Great soundtrack, by the way. Yeah. 
if you ever get it, you know, just go and listen to it. There's a great Nine Inch Nails song on there. Anyway, um, the Internet is unhappy with this look for the crow. Hmm. And uh, so I don't know. He's got a face with a nipple for an eye. What could you be upset about that for? What else could you ask for? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, look right there. And he's the Illuminati. And he's the Illuminati, too. So, I mean, come on. I mean, uh, looks like that face has pink eye. (laughs) Ayo. There we go. What's going on with that broken chain on his top ab? What is it in there? A heart? Or what is that? Oh, God. You're making me do so much zooming today. Sorry, Rebecca. Sorry. Uh, it's a heart, it looks like. Maybe. And the chains around his heart have been broken, I guess. I no, that's know. a lock. This is, is a lock. lock. Oh, that's a lock. Mm-hmm. Okay. I or it's a Bust like a Millennium Falcon. So he's broken free. That's it. Yeah. Metaphorically, I'm sure, okay. of something. Yeah. <laughs> I got a centipede going down to his millipede. Centipede on his gum cutters. <laughs> <laughs> so they asked the, the director, Rupert Sanders, uh, what's up with this? And here's Ooh wee, what's up with what's this? Up with that? <laughs> and here's what he had to say. I think the beauty of Bill Skarsgård is that he has a disturbing beauty. As oh. he transforms through his loss, he becomes this thing that he can't control. It's that famous line, whoever fights monsters must be careful that one day they don't become one. That look to me was in the 90s when we were squat raving in London. Uh, mixed in with some modern influences like Post Malone and Little Peep, I hope people who are 19 today look at him and go, that guy is us. Lil That's Peep? Is that a person? Lil it's Peep? A, it's a, I think it's a rapper or something. Is that an Easter candy? <laughs> Carl, Carl Clark like has Dr. strong Pepper. feelings about this, about this look. <laughs> Let's see. He's a huge Crow fan. This is terrible. I'd rather see what the Momoa Crow would have been. They might as well... Bring back Edward Furlong for this crap. Okay. Wow. Al, the Momoa crow is well fed. <laughs> yes. Because he is living well, the, his best life right now. But the crow in the comic book was pretty jacked, too. He wasn't super oh, skinny. Yeah. He was, no. he was no. filled out and everything. He wasn't. No, he was kind of skinny, but he was just supernaturally strong. Yeah. Uh, Duh. I'm, tr- I'm trying mm. to remember, really. But uh, I don't know. It's my, you know, it's, it's the Jimmy Martin mantra. Show me what you got. Yeah. You know, he's showing yeah. you right there. Exactly. I'm, yeah, look. I'm, I'm still more excited for Boy Kills World. <laughs> well, I, okay. So I would argue I mean, this for me hits Man of Steel versus Superman. Uh, this is not necessarily my crow, but mm-hmm. I'll see it. Yeah, I mean, I'll go. I'll go see it. I'll, I'll wait till it shows up on Tubi. I was gonna say I, I have no <laughs> horse in this race. I don't care. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, new crow movie. All right. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. I mean, you know, Lee probably weigh in on this because it, it was it was a, a reasonably important comic book for our time. Yeah. You know, it 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 made the goth kids feel good because they had uh-huh. a hero. You know. <laughs> yeah. Do we think this will be cursed and he's gonna die? No. Ooh. No? Well, that's uh, how you become a crow, Rebecca. I think yeah. the crow movies have only killed one person. And some uh, yes, so say, far. Some people would so say it far. was the Lee family curse that killed Brandon. That and is not true. The crow curse. That's true. That is um, true. For those who don't know, here's the synopsis Soulmates Eric Draven and Shelley Webster are brutally murdered when the demons of her dark past catch up with them. Uh, given the chance to save his true love by sacrificing himself, Eric sets out to seek merciless revenge on their killers, transversing worlds of the living and the dead to put wrong things right. And oh. they set it against Hell Knight in Detroit, which is really cool. Well, now I'm kind of curious. Are they going to Constantine this? Because they said the demons of her past. Are they going to go all in and have it where she, you know, there's something supernatural outside of the crow involved that she got wrapped up in. That was my question, because I read, I think, half of those comics, and I just couldn't figure out really what was going on and why he had powers and what he was doing. Comics, duh. Yeah, that's the answer. uh, Face (laughs) value, Tony, face value. That's the real answer. Comics does your answer. I guess, yeah. Uh, Turn off, brain. What are you doing? All right. Uh, We got some more news uh, after a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, First of all, of course, on all of our social medias and Geek Show medias, Look for this uh, uh, QR code and uh, help the uh, Cade family in this time because, well, everything is expensive in hospitals. <laughs> you know what I was thinking, Mike? When I, came, when I came to see you, Lee, in the hospital, yeah. I was looking around the room and I was like, 
every one of these machines is costing him a fortune. Every ibuprofen was five dollars. Oh my god! I'm not surprised. I was complaining yeah. about a three dollar coffee yeah. the other day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we got the uh, we got the new unadjusted bill the other day, and uh, let's let's just say I'm four and a half million dollars away from Steve Austin. Well, well. Jeez. <laughs> So as you can see, the uh, the American medical health care system really could uh, best in the world, baby. Yeah, use some. That's what Mr. Hannity tells me. But uh, yeah, stop yeah. listening to him. He didn't visit me while I was in the hospital. Correct, <laughs> jerk. Another thing you I know thought, of. Another thing I thought of when, <laughs> when I was in the hospital visiting you was how much plastic waste there is in hospitals. Oh yeah, so much. You know, I mean that so alone. Much. The hospitals. I think about I just think about that in my my everyday daily going about. I, oh, I, I get so stressed out well. about single yeah. use plastic. Yeah. And you know what I was thinking while I was visiting myself in the hospital is that the uh, life flight helicopter would have been a lot cooler with the theme to Airwolf blasting every time. <laughs> yes. Well, well, yes. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, we can rebuild Lee, and you can help. Uh, it's true. Can, hey, can... I got I got my last piece of hardware taken out this week. Yeah. So uh, Yay. I, uh, which is interesting because. I couldn't figure out what that stabbing feeling in my abdomen was. Turns out it was this foot-long piece of tubing that's going to <laughs> my pancreas. It. So now that that's out, oh. the doctor was like, this might feel a little weird while I'm pulling it out. And then he's like, okay, that's done. And I said, you're done? And he's like, oh, I've never heard anybody ever. I've taken thousands of these out. I've never had anybody not feel it come out. So anyway, it's uh, it's out. And uh, I yeah. get to not walk like Frankenstein everywhere it's out, I go. It's proud. Yep. Yeah, I've yeah. I've I've been through that. I know what you're talking about. They wouldn't <laughs> let me keep it, Carrie. I know, right? They said what it are you was gonna a... do with it. Oh uh, well, they, it said biohazard on the bag it was in. I thought that sounded cool. They uh, mm -hmm. they wouldn't let me keep my testicle either. So. Uh... <sighs> What you could have done with that? I need I that. My power. Carrie's walking around saying, where is my testicle, doctor? Okay. Where is my testicle? Shrine. I had it put in this ring, and I use it to project mm, rage. All right. Uh, let's see. So there's uh, help, help the Cade family in their time. Uh, also, uh, geekshow.store is where you can go to get our merch. And uh, that's uh, the shirts and the, Definitely. the hats. Definitely limited time on that fashion doll shirt. Yeah. Oh, it's coming, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make that phone call, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hoodies, hats, all of that there with our uh, fabulous new logo. Flags, even, for the back of your pickup trucks for the next dune rally you go to. I don't know. Uh, oh. Also, uh, yeah, don't forget our Patreon, cool. where uh, you get uh, oh. extra stuff. You get the geek... You get... Uh, uh, you get uh, the Space Show show early, and I prom I know I promised last week, but the week got away from me. More videos from the Time Closet coming up this week, I promise you. Also, I started uploading the audio from the after party. So if you just want to hear the audio and you don't care about looking at our beautiful faces, then you can just uh, listen to go it. Go ahead yeah. and just listen to it. All right, and you do get the after party with the... Uh, with the uh, Patreon. So it's uh, geekshowgotthiscovered.com. It's a direct link. It'll take you right there to our Patreon. Well, some of you almost got the after party for nothing today. <laughs> Tony. Well, somebody messed it up. Freaking yeah. idiot. All right. Uh, you're a Tony. genius. Don't be hard on yourself. Super genius. Baby, don't do that. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Doom? But it's amazing. Not, no, not Doom. We'll, we'll get My to Doom. The Crow? No, we'll get to Crow, it. it's amazing. This. Uh, the Naked Gun reboot. Mm. Now, uh, Liam Neeson, which I think mm. is funny on its face because it's like Leslie Nielsen. Uh, <laughs> they sound it. alike. But uh, Liam Neeson <laughs> is going to play the part of Lieutenant Frank Drebin of Police Squad. Don't call me Shirley. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's going to be a reboot wrong movie. of these movies. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this because... Okay. So let yes. me let me guide you toward uh, a clip from the show. Um, oh, what is the show that uh, uh, Warwick Davis did with Ricky Gervais, where he plays himself as a struggling actor? Mm -hmm. No, no. He had his no, own the show. other the other one. Yeah, the I other know one. the show you're talking about, and it's not extras. No. And there is, I'll find it. But there is a two or three minute segment with uh, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Um, uh, and Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson and Warwick Davis. And Neeson is hilarious in that He's, scene. Because he says he wants to do improv. Yes, and it is so funny. 
<laughs> now, if he, this is the trick. The problem with the Naked Gun movies is Leslie Nielsen realized he was funny. Liam Neeson knows he's funny. He showed yeah. up in a movie and he was funny once. But Leslie Nielsen kind of ruined these movies as they went along because they got so wacky and he uh, started pulling faces and going, oh, look at me, I'm funny. Mugging the, for the camera. The reason that it was funny, a funny premise is that he was a dramatic actor his entire career. And then they put him in this and they told him, just do it straight. That's what I mean. That's just you know? like uh, that's just like this clip from uh, the show that I, mm -hmm. I I sound really knowledgeable. Do you guys, about. Do you guys think OJ's gonna come back? For this? They might. I, oh. <laughs> wasn't uh, wasn't this a that wasn't the movie series spun off from Police Story? Police I, Squad uh, was the show. Police Squad. Wasn't it a, ABC wasn't show? It also a wasn't it a book? Police Squad. Or I feel like this was a book. I don't no. know. Don't know. Uh, no, that what was it was. Show. Life's too short. Life's too short. Thank you. Uh, well, it was from Airplane. They saw how funny Leslie Nielsen was when he was playing it straight. And they said, well, let's do a cop show parody, a parody of all those 1970s cop shows. And that's where you got Police Squad. And there was some brilliant stuff in it. And one of the best gags in the Police Squad TV series was they would have a guest star every week, just like those old 70s detective shows. Tonight's special guest star. And in the, Jamie Farr. In the opening credits... They would kill the guest star, and he never showed up again. He or she never showed up again in the, in the episode. That was one of the gags. And they had one where it was special guest star John Belushi. And it was, like, it was getting ready to play, and he died for realsies. And so they decided, maybe we should back off on <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> also... uh, so there is a novel called The Naked Truth, which is by actor Leslie Nielsen and David Fisher, and it's a fictional autobiography allegedly telling the inside story of Nielsen's life and acting career. Wow. Oh, so it's a bio. All right. Hey, that so show before you also... leave this, go ahead, Lee. Oh, no, I think what you had to say is probably far more important. Please go. <laughs> I, I seriously doubt it, but <laughs> oh. thank you. You're very gracious. Yeah. Um, look at, okay, so consider this. You go, we're used to Liam Neeson having a particular set of skills and being that guy. But remember 1989, they cast Michael Keaton as Batman. And everybody's mm -hmm. like, we cannot have a comedian as Batman. Mm -hmm. Now, grant you, he doesn't Batman. have the chin for it. But aside from that, I thought he was a fantastic Batman. Well, I think comedians are, are comedians are far more likely to succeed in a serious role than some, like say some other no, like, and that's dramatic fair. actors. I could see that. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. But I, I mean, it's really also- I liked him in the 18 movie. Yes, he was. But again, that was a little more serious than yeah. this by far. But I mean, so, well, I mean, the, uh, it the, can thing, happen. the thing that gives me hope for this project is the people behind it. Uh, first of all, uh, Rebecca, uh, Seth MacFarlane is producing. I saw that. Yes. So uh, <laughs> you got that. And you've got the guys who wrote a very funny movie, the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie. That's a good movie. Uh, Dan, Dan Greger and Doug Mann, they wrote the script uh, with, uh, let's see, uh, uh, somebody else, Akiva Schaefer. Is it Akiva Schaefer? Yeah. Yes. So there's all that. That's your, uh, uh, you know, the people behind it. So that gives me, that gives me hope and faith. Like I said, if they, if they just tell Liam Neeson, just play this straight. Don't pull any faces. Don't. What's just... the other movie he did where he played like. He it was a comedic movie and he still also played like a serious character. Uh, Star Wars hey, Episode in... One, I think, is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. get in the comments, everybody. <laughs> yeah, get in there. <laughs> uh, also, uh, news released uh, from uh, this uh, this week is uh, you're getting another uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, cartoon, The mm, Mutant Mayhem. Nice. You're getting a second one, and cool. you're uh, also getting a uh, something called Novocaine, starring Jack Quaid and Amber Mid Thunder. Quaid, it's an action okay. title. Hmm. So there's all that. All right. Uh, bring up that picture of uh, the first image that we have seen from Tron. That from looks Tron? like a Tron. Looks like a Tron. Uh, it's Tron a bad Ares. Tron. Now, of course, the internet being the internet, they said, "Well, this is very exciting because we've we've never seen red on the grid before. We've seen yellow and blue, but not oh, it's red." It's evil now. Uh, the data disks are are not disks. So, again, something for the internet to get upset about. It's a triangle. Kerry? Yeah. Kerry? Yeah. Clue in... He was... The first uh, Tron was orange. Red. Oh, okay. It was orange? Okay. Oh, he was in Tron Legacy. Um, no, but I'm like the first one. The first I think that they had him as red. Oh, okay. maybe. Uh, but if you... Of course, the internet did this. They zoomed in on the data disk. 
Oh, I thought you were going to say What's but. What's that? This, this that triangle? That thing there, yeah. They, you probably won't be able to see it on this picture. It's a Nairobi. It's not a Frisbee anymore. <laughs> yes, I was Nerf, just thinking a, that, a Rob. Boomerang. Like, <laughs> I had a Nairobi boomerang that looked just like that. <laughs> if you look right at the top of the center, you can see a word there. The word says Dillinger Systems. Huh? Now, that means something if you're a Tron fan, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, because in the first Tron, <laughs> Edward Dillinger, played by David Warner, was the head of ENCOM, and uh, he's the bad guy who stole the idea from Flynn and hid the evidence, which is what Flynn was able to acquire by destroying the master control program running the show. Mm -hmm. The movie ends with Flynn t taking over for Dillinger as the true brains behind the company. Now, in Tron Legacy, Cillian Murphy uh, is Edward Dillinger Jr., the son of the original character who works at ENCOM as a software engineer. And he's also on the board and is set up as a potentially villainous character. So the Dillinger name continues. I doubt Killian Murphy is going to be back for this one. I bet The you man's he's... about to walk away with an Oscar. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he's like, I'm bye bye. Well, <laughs> it, you know, no, it just depends on how big the truckload of money is they pull up to his house. I mean, maybe they want to throw a bunch of money at it to have this his name in there. Maybe he I just wants to have something thing, fun. Here's the thing about Killian Murphy, okay? Mm -hmm. He has a, so he has a son. And there's a period he is so Killian Murphy is so Irish. How Irish is he? He has a son and they were living in England and his son started to develop an English accent. Killian Murphy said, "Not on my watch." And they moved back to the moved back to Ireland. Boy, okay. <laughs> boy, that's some privilege there. Wow. Some, <laughs> yeah, and that, wow. is, that is some Irish privilege right there. Yeah, that's like not two words. Those aren't two words you hear together very often. <laughs> Irish either. privilege. No, I, uh, I I use Irish privilege in the shower every morning. It's. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, try my soap. Oh, da, 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 da. If you're a Tron fan, that movie's. Right. Oh, how do you wash a lady, Will Riker? Ah, from the toes up. Show her ankles. Space show show. You're missing out, folks. Ah, All right. You're missing out on some a brood cool mare. casual Irish racism. <laughs> That's right. Which captain do I need to bone to get off this ship? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's get some Superman news going. It's just a couple of little things happened this week. Uh, we is got our cake? first week. Is it cake? We got our first look <laughs> at the symbol on superman's chest and it's oh, it's got yeah. snow on it which means uh, fortress of solitude hopefully. right or he just flew through a snow cone shack i yeah. don't know that's true uh james gunn fun, posted... fun, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to know what's going on james gunn posts on his social media all the time and here's yep. what he had to say he says uh, when i finished uh, the first draft of the script I called the film Superman Legacy, but by the time I locked the final draft, it was clear the title was Superman. And uh, July 2025, he uh, let us know that that's the, so the name change and the release. Nice. So there's that. Uh, there was a there was a uh, Instagram from DC official yesterday, I believe, that mm -hmm. Rachel Brosnahan, uh, David Cornswit, and Nicholas Holt with his shaved head, mm -hmm. and it just. Mm -hmm. making a little cameo appearance you're like oh that's what he's going to look like mm -hmm. so you I can kind of get i think they're doing this thing and i think it's a very smart move where they're getting a lot of fans on board before the movie comes out oh, yeah, they're sure. doing a lot of like look how much fun we're having making this superman movie and they're mm -hmm. being very not transparent but like we're having fun have fun with us yeah. and that way like people are going to be less likely to just poo poo the idea of another superman well, it's not zack it snyder out. superman i don't all know all you have it. to do is read any comment section on social media of any of this stuff that's coming down to see all the snyder bros that are on there just screaming oh, well. oh, we so all know those are bring back the snyder yeah, we, we know they're there and we know they're you know they're gonna shoot it all down anyway but i'll take a james gunn superman over just about any other creative amen. talent out there mm -hmm. amen um the uh, the lines for this logo are very Kingdom Come I, reminiscent. Yes, they are. I was going to ask you guys. Yeah. I, very I love the texture of it. Of the yeah, I didn't texture. realize no I had an unpopular it. opinion that I liked the texture on the Superman Returns suit because the S was all like little like little S's. Mm. It was a jacquard uh, pattern inside the suit. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I didn't realize that was an unpopular opinion to have because I really liked that. <laughs> I didn't know that either. I mean, I thought yeah, it was an unpopular was opinion back mm -hmm. when the movie came out because oh. the um, singer did a couple of uh, shots showing Brandon Ralph in the costume, and then they did close-ups of the shield and the suit because it's also in the suit texture, if I'm not mistaken, as well. 
Mm. And people yeah, are just like, why do you got to have so many S's? We know he's Superman. Well, it's like those J.J. Uh, Abrams Star Trek uniforms. They all have little uh, Delta little shields. Deltas in them. Oh. Or uh, Jim Lee's Batman boots that have bats in the treads. Mm -hmm. I never noticed that. I never yeah. noticed yeah. that either. Oh, look I, at that. I, I saw, I just saw thought, a couple of times and I never saw it. Yeah, I just thought it was a cool texture. I never knew there were S's in there. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. All right, and we also got casting for Perry White in this movie. For Superman, it's uh, Wendell Pierce who's going to nice. be playing Perry nice. White. Who's currently on a new show on CBS called Elspeth, which I'm trying to get a handle on. I'm trying to decide if I oh. like it or not. It's a spinoff oh. of The Good Wife and whatever it other spinoff show was. She's oh. one of the lawyers from that show who comes to New York to help solve crimes. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got some Deadpool and Wolverine casting news, and this is all secret stuff. You know, the Internet is full of this stuff. According to a new listing from a filing the U.S. Copyright Office, Emma Corrin is going to be playing Cassandra Nova. Wow, that's interesting. In Deadpool okay. and Wolverine. That's, of course, the evil twin sister of Charles Xavier. The evil. Is she the... The absorbed, the absorbed fetal twin of Charles who grew, Xavier. Who, 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 grew, who, grew who grew herself. Who tried to destroy in the womb, and she somehow survived in the sewer? That's how and, strong like, she is. And, built herself hey, from you know, a bunch stronger, of cells, faster. making a real argument for the pro-life movement. If you know. Thaddeus, <laughs> Venture <did> pretty, <laughs> Thaddeus Venture did pretty much the same thing. Yes. <laughs> um, is she the girl that was on uh, Murder at the End of the World? Is that who that is? I don't know. She's on Game of Thrones. Murder at Emma Corrin. The... No idea. Yeah, um, that's her. Emma Corrin, Murder at the I End of the World. You should check that out. Check that out on, on Hulu. It was pretty good. Oh, and they, they, them, are their pronouns. Oh, yeah. it was they, them. Okay, yeah. good to know. Thank you. We'll try right, to remember. There's lots uh, to keep track of there, folks. Okay. Uh, also, we got some uh, news. Uh, here's some DC news for you guys. Uh, because your Crisis on Infinite Earths animated dish movies, uh, part two is coming April 23rd. Part three's release date is to be determined, but uh, we it is confirmed that Kevin Conroy's Batman will reunite with Mark Hamill's Joker for the last time. Yeah. Uh, he did this voice, uh, Conrad did the voice work before he died, apparently. So this is this is probably your last chance. And I, I believe Hamill has said he doesn't want to do the Joker anymore unless it was with Kevin, right? He did yeah. say that? Oh, that's, that's, that's sweet. Good. So that will be in part three of your uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth movies. Well, Silver Lining... Was fun. Silver lining there is that uh, Kevin Conroy's final Batman performance isn't the Suicide Squad yeah. game. So, or, or <laughs> uh, the Justice League. <laughs> or his Crisis on Infinite Earths CW crossover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was right. something, wasn't it? <laughs> that's right. Hey, at least um, Burt Ward got a scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, how many of you have been watching this uh, live action Avatar The Last Airbender show? I watched a few episodes. You did? What did you yeah. think? I think it's pretty really cool. It. Yeah. Le There's you a lot of it. Right? I, I loved it, and I, I love the original series, too. I don't think one replaces go, the right? other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you, it's uh, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the kids being kind of stiff actors, and I just say, well, you know, you're not you're not going to always find a perfect actor. They're very good at what they're doing for this show. Well, so. that's the thing. Everybody has an opinion who is a fan of this, yeah. you know, IP. Uh, but here's the thing is that it's it's huge. Uh, the, new, the new series debuted on Netflix with a 21.2 million views. Wow. Reached wow. the top 10 in 92 countries. There's some really good stuff going on in this show. I mean, like the Sky Bison should look stupid. They look so good. Mm -hmm. And then when they get to uh, Avatar, is it Avatar Kyoshi? I can't remember the, um, the, the fire Avatar. And they show her coming back and fighting. And I'm like, it's yeah. so good. People um, just need to give the uh, actors the chance to slip into the role as the season well, goes. You I, know? I think what we're dealing with here is some people who didn't live during a period where Trial of the Incredible Hulk is the best you've got on TV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get what you're I saying there, Lee, but also counterpoint is uh, nobody <laughs> lives in that era now and we i have, live in that era Toma. we have a lot more Toma. good you, stuff you to compare it to four channels yeah, that, yeah that's what i mean like there's a lot more to compare it to now so you can't just keep going back to the old well no, in the not, 80s everything sucked so this no, is great but, but I, that's that's not quite my point my point is that <laughs> you you would wait for something to be adapted faithfully and then you'd get trial of the incredible hulk yeah mm -hmm. so and i don't mean that oh we had it worse we had to walk up hills both ways just That's saying what, that this man. this show this show <laughs> is a very faithful recreation of yeah. the anime 
where they made some they made some decisions that don't follow the anime exactly and there's a lot of people you know clutching and, their pearls over that and um, that's fine because it's a different medium it's a different telling of the story but i say know? the same thing i said about the live action one piece it mm -hmm. was a lot of fun and i never watched the anime so um same. the same with the live action cowboy bebop purists like me couldn't stand it but there are oh, a lot see, of people and i, I enjoyed it really i liked it a lot i thought it was yeah. good but but tony you have to remember how trial of the incredible hulk ended he fell out of a helicopter and broke his back and died. Yep. The Hulk. Oh. The Hulk did? The Hulk did. He, did. Yep. Did, he, did hmm. he get acquitted first? Or? <laughs> what were the you results who, of the trial? Yeah. You know who his lawyer was? His lawyer was Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock. His name was Blind like Wicker Murdoch. Basket Face. Blind Sounds Wicker like Basket you guys got everything you wanted out of that. We got John Rice Davies as the kingpin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which was, which was terrible. Anyway. Was it? Oh, it was. It was not yes. good. Come on. It was not good. Go well, he kept calling yeah. Bruce Banner indie for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> John, <laughs> Reece, John Reece Davies can do no wrong. It's it's yeah. on YouTube. Go and take a look at it, and you'll see what we went through, Tony. Here, no Tony, one tosses really a crime it, lord. If you really want to see how bad it was, look up Reb Brown, Captain America. And I'll just okay. leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. We got some casting for The Last of Us Season 2. Uh, there they are. Thank you. Uh, it's a, uh, let's see, Danny Ramirez, Ariella Barrar, Tati Gabrielle, and Spencer Lord. Now, the reason I, I brought this up is because I, I love the, sh the descriptions of the characters that the studio puts out, you know. Season 2, uh, Ramirez will play Manny a loyal soldier whose sunny outlook belies a fear that he'll let his friends down. Hmm. Uh, Barrer from Runaways, that's where you've seen her before, uh, will play Mel, a young doctor committed to saving lives amid war and tribalism. Oh, yikes, dude. <laughs> Gabrielle will play Nora, a military medic struggling to come to terms with her past. And Lord will play Owen, a gentle soul in a warrior's body who's fighting an enemy he refuses to hate. Wait, that's <laughs> me. Yikes, if you're remembering these characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just love the descriptions that they put out. They think that's helpful. I, I've just been watching Pedro Pascal's acceptance speech. At, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. I'm going to go have a panic attack and leave. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm really drunk because I didn't think I was going to have to stand here. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick Offerman's acceptance speech as well. Yeah. Yeah, that classic. was beautiful too. Look those up. Uh, okay, we still have no word from the studio about Coyote versus Acme. Ooh. But Will Forte posted an open letter in the Hollywood Reporter, I believe, to the cast and crew. He finally got to see the film that he is in. All right. Uh, here's what he said to the cast and crew of Coyote versus Acme. I know that a lot of you haven't gotten a chance to see our movie, and sadly, it's looking like you never will. When I first heard that our movie was getting deleted, I hadn't seen it yet, so I was thinking what everyone else must have been thinking, this thing must be a hunk of junk. But then I saw it, and it's incredible. Super oh, funny throughout, stu visually stunning, sweet, sincere, and emotionally resident in a very earned way. As the credits rolled, I just sat there thinking how lucky I was to be a part of something so special that quickly turned to confusion and then frustration. This was the movie that they're not going to release? Look, when it comes to Hollywood business stuff, I don't know shit about shit. Even when a movie tests very well, like ours, there's no guarantee it's going to be a hit. And at the end of the day, the people who paid for this movie can obviously do whatever they want with it. It doesn't mean I have to like it. I fucking hate it or agree with it. I don't have to. And it doesn't mean that this movie is anything less than magnificent. You would be so proud of it. A movie that should be seen but won't. Please know that all these years and years of hard work, dedication, and love that you uh, put into it was worth it all. So, uh, yeah. But they're getting a $115 million tax write-off for deleting this thing. Isn't Such that like BS. isn't that like 120th of their CEO's annual salary? <laughs> yeah, I have it's... a feeling it's going to get leaked. I hope I, it does. I really hope it does. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing I was thinking. There's been so much hype and controversy around everything going on with this movie is Like do you right, think there's been so much hype that it makes more sense now to release to release it because i think it'd have a good chance of here's, being profitable here's the thing if i were warner brothers i would release it for because two things one of two things will happen it'll be released and it won't be a hit 
and we'll be able to say, see. Oh, that's true. Or all of this hype will make it a hit and we'll make our money back and we'll win, win anyway. Win. It's kind of a win-win. But do you have to pay back the tax write-off at that point? You don't get the tax write-off if you release it. So. Yeah. So if, if and, and they don't get the tax write-off until they delete it. Mm. Are they happy with their new CEO? I've not heard anyone say that David Zaslav is a genius. So, <laughs> Other than so, David Zaslav. Other yeah, than he. So yeah. you, you, you shit can him, sweep him to the curb, bring in a new hero CEO, says, I changed my mind, and we're going to stop t- wasting taxpayer money on these projects that were so, you know, in bad So now I would, I would love to see a movie that is breaking into Warner Brothers Studios to steal this movie. And then releasing that movie, make that the movie. National <laughs> Treasure Four, the next yeah. Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, and now I'm asking my uh, smart people on the panel here, uh, who has read Neuromancer from William? I don't Gibson? know. <laughs> Me. There we go. Oh. oh, he's got his prop already ready. Look at this you guy. Nerds. I, I tried. I started it. I'm pissed. Where's my Neuromancer? <laughs> One of my favorite books. I got my, the green cover one. My Neuromancer's oh. in my Kindle because oh, I... Uh, Care about the planet. I'm living uh, in the year 2023. So. Oh, yeah. Wait, 2024. I, I use, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I use thrift books for all my physical media, so I'm actually recycling. Oh, that's oh, cool. I've that had time. this book forever, but you I also had the video game. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, oh. man. Uh, so this is a book. Rob. I love Neuromancer it. Neuromancer kills me love because it. it's like he is dead on prediction-wise. Prediction for well, just yeah. about everything, and he wrote this in the early '80s. But the only thing he didn't get was uh, payphones. <laughs> payphones, yeah. payphones yep. through the whole book, and also the uh, how much microprocessors would advance in the I number of years. I don't think anybody could see that. Well, yeah, he was I like, mean, was... He, he was like, okay, I have hidden in my in in my storage container Tony. a 256 kilobyte <laughs> RAM module that's my... worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> when I got my first home computer and it had a 10 gigabyte hard drive, and the guy that was helping me set it up, he he was stammering and shaking because he never thought he'd see a 10 gig hard drive. <laughs> and this was like 1996. Well, I we mean... have 1.5 terabyte micro. SD cards now the size of yeah. my pinky. Well, I mean the book came out in 84. 84. So yeah. Hard to well, hard he to add, He added he added a foreword later on that where he even was like, "Look, I didn't know." Yeah. Yeah. There's a spider. I got to kill it. I'll be right back. Uh it is uh it is now run, coming Run Peter, to, run. It is now coming to a smaller screen, longer format. Uh, Graham Rowland, who did Dark Winds, and JD Dillard, who did Devotion have teamed up to adapt the novel for Apple TV Plus. 10 episode series. Okay, right. so I've got thoughts on this. Yeah. I am cautiously optimistic because I've seen a uh, a William Gibson adaptation called Johnny Mnemonic, oh, starring yeah. Keanu Reeves, and it sucked. It was not good. It, it sucked hard. It's kind yeah. of fun to watch right now for all the wrong reasons, though. Just because uh, Henry Rollins and Ice T are in it? No, isn't, not enough. Uh, for that. Isn't, per- isn't Peripheral a William Gibson story? Uh, oh, okay. I haven't watched yes, Peripheral. Yes, it is. Though. I <laughs> dug the hell out of Peripheral. Okay. It's, it's, it's very loosely adapted, but it's, it's fun. I mean, this was the book that got me into Gibson, and I've been a fan for, for decades. Yeah. Let, me, let, me okay. hook, but, let, let me hook Rebecca Frost real quick here, though. Okay. Uh, because uh, Graham Rowland, who did the screenplay, also worked on a little show called Lost. Mm. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Mm-hmm. All right. Everything I've seen about this, I am in 100%. Yeah. Did uh, you get the spider, else... Tony? I did. I, I killed it. It's dead. Don't have That's to worry so about it sneaking up on this, me. I saw this spider this morning and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll get out of your way. And I let it be. Meta Web is going to get you, Tony. If mm. any sort of bug crosses the threshold of my home, it forfeits its life. <laughs> outside of my house, even even outside of the doorframe, it's fine. That's your, you know, you do you. I'm, I'm totally happy with that. And finally, this uh, one thing that's been on everyone's mind is the cast and crew open up about their experiences <laughs> filming Dune 2 is, what about the bucket? Uh, <laughs> what about, what about the, bucket? the bucket? What about the bucket? So they finally, bucket? they finally ask the director. Uh, he's shocked and impressed. He says, I don't want to make stupid jokes right now, but I, I'll regret uh, tomorrow morning, but I will say this. When I saw it, I went, holy smokes, what the fuck? At the, at the same time, it created a lot of fun online content, so maybe it's positive? 
uh, I think it was absolutely a net win for the mm -hmm. for the marketing of Dune mm -hmm. 2. But I, I watched I, Jimmy Kimmel trying to get the, the different cast members to put their hand in it and just yeah. watching them all go. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, but I told you what Tim, Timothy Chalamet said about it. Uh, he Timmy. said, uh, he says, I can't tell if someone, I can't tell if someone is at home right now going, my design worked perfectly and everyone's talking about it, or if he's at home brutally offended by the response. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just still don't know where the batteries go. <laughs> uh, tech, tech blueberry has a good thought on it though you just get to make a sarlacc pit for your mini games yeah uh, that's true and put your uh, little boba fett action figures in there too nice Aye! so there you go all right what did we consume this week who won oh well let's start with dune 2 twoon twoon let's start with dune 2 uh, you and lee have seen it rebecca let's let's hear what you thought um, I know uh, it's making all the money this weekend. I know good. that. Yeah, it's predicted like ninety million dollars this weekend. Um, I didn't like the first Dune. I'll be the first person to say it. I didn't care for it. Um, maybe I was in the wrong headspace. Um, Dune two. You ever f you you know those moments where you feel like you're participating in a large cultural moment. That's what Dune 2 feels like. Dune mm -hmm. 2, like sitting in my seat at Dune 2, knowing that like a good chunk of the world is also sitting down to watch Dune 2 was so incredible. Um, it, it's the definition of a blockbuster. Like it is insane what and this man has done. a smart blockbuster. And a smart blockbuster yeah. too. It's, I visually blown away yeah, um i really wait. i personally struggled i gave it four and a half stars on letterboxd um i struggled with that rating though because while everything about the movie block like visually blockbuster cast that's a blockbuster cast right um i don't know how i felt about the story of dune itself <laughs> you know <laughs> they hey, sanitized it greatly you sound and like me yeah. thankful after li <laughs> after listening to the book, I was like, what yeah. was that? Okay. I don't know how what? I felt about <laughs> the story, but um, I think I you know I think we've got something really special on our hands here. Oh, yeah. Um, Oof. like I said, it's the definition of a blockbuster. I didn't see it in IMAX; I saw it in a regular old theater. The speakers were definitely getting blown out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I never got up to use the bathroom once. I was into it the entire time. Yeah. Um. I, I do wonder if it's dangerous that we prop Timothy Chalamet up to be a savior type. Well. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and I know that's the book and I, everything I'm reading says that he's not the hero of Dune no. and that character has to return. But I mean, really the only actor who would be in all seven Frank Herbert adaptations would be Momoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Appar apparently, yeah. Duncan Idaho is like the hero of Dune. Hmm. Yeah. But they, yeah, they're... like ov like overall, I thought stunning, like an awesome time at the movies. You know, if you're going. <laughs> I right. I very rarely use the word masterpiece when I'm talking about a movie. Uh, the the things that happened on that screen had my jaw down more often than not. There were uh decisions made with with ship design like the ship porn in this movie is mind-boggling oh. things are organic they were very smart in that they said okay dune is in itself a very weird story so let's just kind of trim out the extra weird stuff um they made Channy's character so much better than in the book she's just she's just there so you have somebody like book, Zendaya playing her. You, you have like to apparently in the book, she's just set up to be there for Paul, right? Like she's just and set up and yeah. as like second, a supporting character for Paul. By by Dune Messiah, she's basically there to have babies and die, and that's <laughs> like congratulations. So they they set this whole thing up. There, are, it's it's a cautionary story about prophecy. It's a cautionary story about zealotry. Um, Stilgar's character is so amazing in this, in that they they. They kind of show how uh, religious fanaticism can take hold of a people uh, so quickly. Oh yeah, and Javier Bardem does such a good job too because in the first movie, yeah. I was 
would be intimidated by his character, right? But then yeah. in this second one, the more you like get to know him and see, you know, peek past the layers, you realize, he's, oh, I don't know that we should be taking this man seriously. He's a sweet guy. He's got all the right intentions, but okay, sound design. I, I did see it in IMAX, and they made some decisions there, like when the, when the worms are coming your seat starts rumbling just a little bit because mm -hmm. there's this kind of sub audible growl going on. Um, just, just kind of flawless. Timothy Chalamet was amazing. Austin Butler blew my mind. I did not expect Fade Rapa to be this developed of a character. And then there's the, the whole thing with Getty Prime. They shot the whole thing in infrared and uh, in it with an infrared it was... camera. Uh, one of the most stunning scenes I've yeah. ever when seen. The fireworks in a movie. started going off. I was just like, I, I give up. I don't know how. Like, are they so, even considered fireworks? Or is know? it just? Are they just like waterworks? Bodies against the sky. I don't know. Yeah. But they, it, it is. A lot of people are saying that it's like it's a villain who's Empire Strikes Back. I say it's this apocalypse now. Well, I mean, he's mm. wanted to make mm. these movies since he was a kid. Yeah, and it's it's like. You know, especially if you've read the books, you you know the story of Paul Atreides. You know exactly where things are going, and uh, you feel the inevitability of it here. And they made a very smart decision in that you kind of feel like there's a chance that Paul's not going to go a certain direction until something towards the end of the movie happens. And then it's like destiny clicks in, and he's the Quitsat Haderach, and that's that. You're there's done. There's a there. Fuck I have, so Parkins. I had this thought. <laughs> I had this thought during the movie, and I'm seeing this thought also echoed on social media about how um, he's very Anakin Skywalker esque, yeah. and like that. There's that. There's a scene where he's doing Quitsat Haderach stuff, and I was like, damn, that's Anakin Skywalker shit. Like. Well, every Scary, good idea George almost. Lucas had, he took from Frank Herbert. It's right, right. Probably, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, Sand the, planet. The Star Wars Sander prequels, the Star Wars then prequels then are Duke. literally <laughs> Doom. It just yeah. swap yeah. out some names. But, but it's but, also, it's also like it's not ser it's not one thousand percent serious the whole way through. It's funny. Like oh, there good. are some, there are some moments that feel very like. 80s movie. And, Javier Bardem is comic relief. Yeah, but, but also, there's also a stupid there's way. a there's a few moments between um, Paul and Chani too, where I was like, "Hee hee, mm -hmm. that's so cute!" Like this kind of feels like a rom com almost. Yep. A really sad, disastrous rom com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's. Well, uh, I'm, I'm it's, glad it's, they gave Zendaya something to do because she is she is amazing. The part know? would have been wasted on uh, like you go back to David Lynch's Dune and Chani that they had. Uh, oh, I can't remember. The lady from Blade Runner, but uh, anyway, they 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 pretty much gave Doom Chani in the David Lynch movie. Like she's there, she's eye candy. Paul's gonna fall in love with her. Uh, but they did some good things, like you know, in the Dune book, I think it covers seven or eight years of history. Like Paul Atreides is only thirteen years old when the book starts. And, yeah. Um, they also are like, okay, well, we're not gonna show the Guild Navigators because the people that are already thinking this is really weird. Are going to tune right out so they just they just found that sweet spot where they could ride right through and crest the weirdness the sandworms are i want to say they steal the movie they don't the whole movie steals the movie like every mm -hmm. time you think you just saw the most mind-boggling thing you ever saw the next mind-boggling thing shows up and says haha you're dumb enjoy the movie <laughs> so yeah i i this is one that i say don't wait for home and so, oh, really? something else okay. about um shawnee's character too this is me just talking about things i've read not knowing anything yeah. about the books <clears throat> her the what they've done for her character in the movie too is everybody else is on board with paul as a messiah right and you need a character to see through that and yep. still mm -hmm. stand their ground mm -hmm. and not believe and that's yep. what they have chani do and it's re it's really good like because if she were to just blindly be into whatever it is Paul's doing. That would kind of be a boring movie. But because you have that conflict of her seeing through the bullshit and seeing Paul for who he is, like makes for some good conflict, especially oh, at good. the end yeah. of the movie. Yeah. All right. And and a good opportunity for some really good acting from people who, you know, I I, I would have written off otherwise. But this everybody brings their A game. It's I don't want to say the, it's a flawless movie. It's it's got its it's got its issues. There's a couple plot points that just kind of disappear, but you don't know. This is the first movie I've been to in 10 years where I didn't hear people eating popcorn, either because they stopped hearing eating popcorn or because my brain <laughs> It was just hard said, to get from the bucket. They were afraid yeah. to reach in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but right. yeah, and like st- like stacking the cast too with all of these like Gen Z superstars. Like this these this is what our next generation of like Hollywood superstars is with Timothy Chalamet, Florence Pugh, Zendaya, Austin Butler. Like yeah. these are what we have to look forward to, and it's awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, so high praise for Dune too. What else yep. did you consume, Rebecca? Um, I've been watching a lot of Oscar movies. I'm almost done with my Oscars race, you guys. Um, I think I have like four or five movies left. Um, I won't talk about everything that I watched, but I will talk about the one that blew my mind, uh, The Zone of Interest. If you haven't seen The Zone of Interest, it will make you physically ill. It is, I, um, it, it's essentially a story of this German family as they, uh, live in this house and just do daily mundane things, go to work and do their things in this house. But, uh, on the other side of the wall of their house is Auschwitz. And this family are, is a family of Nazis and a guy who is, um, in charge of one aspect of this concentration camp. And Mm. I initially was rooting for Oppenheimer for best sound at the Oscars. Zone of interest has to run away with this because they make choices with the sound design in this movie that I watched it at home with headphones on, which I think was the optimal choice. Um, but it made me physically ill, uh, just because of all of the atrocities the happening on the other side of the uh, wall that you can't see, but you can definitely hear. Gee. And so like kids are mm. playing in a pool, having a fun pool party and across the wall, children are getting shot and murdered. And, like and if you also as you pay attention to the background too you can see smoke from the train that's bringing in more people oh my and it's to- i i think i gave it i think i also gave it four and a half stars on letterbox but just a- an astounding movie highly recommend to watch once and never again yeah. <laughs> okay wow all right uh who wants to go next i, I got a quick list so Wee. Uh, talking with a couple of the panelists earlier in our little Discord chat, and uh, turns out you guys did not sell Monarch, uh, the TV series on Apple Plus, to me correctly oh. because you forgot to say two words. What's that? Matt Fraction. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, man, he's in the opening so, credits. Anyway, my uh, <laughs> but he didn't my, know. My, my Apple Plus sub has been re-upped, and uh, that's on my <laughs> that's on my list for this weekend. Uh, Television-wise, uh, the Avatar live-action, we're, we're rounding out the first season. And really, I'd say this about just about everything is, you know, just kind of let things go a little bit and see if there's something you enjoy in it. Um, <laughs> I know one guy, he's only happy because the guy that, my Cabbage's guy, they, they used the voice actor from the cartoon to play the live-action version. That's oh, that's cool. He liked, but at least he found something he liked in it. I thought the earth-bending fights were bonker bananas. Um, like there's some cool bending fights that are just like that's worth price of admission alone. But I I went to I used to go with Jeff Weiss to all the Hong Kong cinema movies at the Tower Theater, and that's what this is is, uh, Hong Kong cinema movies with really good mythology. So, fun stuff there. Uh, I'm I'm suffering my way through the final season of Blacklist. Oh really? <laughs> um, Even I, stopped, I gave up late. I stopped after oh, no, the first no, no, season. No, I thought my, that was only for moms. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is. It's it's my wife's ride or die show, and because I love my wife, I've been sitting and watching her. So uh, I I watch this show literally just because I can watch Raymond Reddington, and his cast of terrible yeah. actors. Yeah. It's like it's like there are two shows going on. There's Raymond and his a plot, and usually uh-huh. it'll be like. I'm Raymond Reddington, and this is Stacey Keach, and we're going to be old guys. And then there's the terrible FBI actors and their fake accents and their fake intrigue, and they've got <laughs> the intense music in the background, and I just go, uh, why Why isn't this a cable and, show? It could have been so see, much better. And I tune in strictly for the Raymond Reddington soliloquies. I was going to yeah, say, yeah, stories, yeah. That's, man. That's so, the reason that I tune in. Is, you know, there's, there's a haberdasher a, in Cairo that I once yeah. knew. And he, you know. yeah. it's, like, it's like reading a travel blog that is also narrated by terrible has-beens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, everything else has been absorbed by comic books this week. So uh, my uh, finally remembered my Marvel Unlimited login. So I'm getting caught up on Fall of X, which oh, yeah. is after after uh, the Rise of X and House of X and all these other Sword of X, all these other things. Wow. 
I didn't Wait. think I was going to see a Sam Peckinpah X Men <laughs> snuff film. Did you um, say the the Sword of X or the Sword of X? Sword, Sword of oh, X. Sword. Sword. Don't make fun of him, people. I, you know I what? I have sure. an accent, Tony. People make fun of me before, and it's yeah. we're saying it the way it's spelled. I just wanted I to also, know what he was saying. <laughs> and I, you know, I appreciate that, Rebecca, because I realized I was I was picking on you a little bit last week, and I felt really bad about it afterwards because I actually do think you're a very talented, very funny person, and. Anytime I am teasing, it's it's meant in love because I think you're awesome. So I didn't bring anyway. it up in therapy or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, there's there's an Alan Scott Green Lantern comic that DC is doing that I'm absolutely loving. Uh, also on uh, Rob's recommendation, I'm reading Action Comics for the first time in 40 years yeah. and, and really really enjoying. Uh, yes. Magic Bizarro is best Bizarro. So worst um, Bizarro, you mean? Yeah, he and best, he and worst, <laughs> he and having most awful day. Uh -huh. um, and then he and uh, laughing hysterically. This right here is fresh bullshit. Yep. <laughs> and and I only say it's fresh bullshit in that it's brilliant, it's amazing. This is something you can only do with Star Trek with comic books because the actors that they have in this. Let's mm -hmm. just say, let's just without really ruining anything, this comic opens up three years after DS Nine, and how do they open it? No, they don't open it the way I would open it three years after DS9. They're like, let's go check in on how Gary Mitchell's doing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's Ooh. the kind of shit they pull in these comics now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's like the Mighty Marvel team up of Star yeah. Trek. It's and, you know, yes. and the uh, the audacity of everything. They're just like, well, let's see how we can get these five different characters from these five different shows on the same ship to go. Oh, here's this two month period of time in the chronology that works. Let's do it and yeah. they do it. And I'm reading it going, this is delicious. Can I have some more? And yes, I can. I can exactly. have all I want. Oh, also, IDW, um, you're you're my heroes right now. These are hardbound graphic novels. Oh, really? And they're oh, 25 nice. bucks. Really? Oh, it's nice. $25. It's hardbound. It's binding is perfect. Even better. Look at the likenesses. Wow. Looks Look great. Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Well, you know. I have zero context for any of this. <laughs> yeah. I, this right. is about as close as I can get to it because... Oh my goodness! There's like it's all it's all deep dive stuff. It's all remember that one 15 minute sequence in that one episode. Let's bring that guy back. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and they make it work. The so IDW, it's a love letter to the fans. Yeah, yeah. the IDW uh, classic Star Trek series is available now with uh, it's it's called Year Five, and I really enjoyed that because and they there's brought... no Year Four because they're saying the animated series was Year Four. Year Four, but yeah. uh, Year Five was wonderful because they brought back Gary Seven for several ep issues. Oh, and fun. It just it just yeah. really cool. Anyway, it, it feels like Star Trek. I remember when Pushing Daisies ended and they're like, oh, we'll do more Pushing Daisies as a comic. And I was like, I don't know if you can capture the voice. This is the voice of Star Trek. Like I can hear the actors mm -hmm. and the likenesses are good enough that it just kind of carries me through. So I, if you're a Trek fan, I can't recommend it enough and get the graphic novels. They're beautiful. All right. So uh, who's next? I'll go. Okay. Um, then I'm going to move kind of fast because I got a lot. So still reading uh, How Long Until Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison. Uh, if if you have read her Far Sector stuff or any of her other prose, buy this. It's short stories. They're very dense, so don't think you're just going to plow through it. I'm like maybe a quarter of the way through it at this point. But the stories are so delightful. She does world building well. She does characterization well. Uh, I've got nothing bad to say about it so far. Um, to go back to, to Lee's deal and uh, Carrie's, mm -hmm. yeah, Star Trek. And at the end of this story, they bring back a plot line that, that we have talked about on the Space Show show a couple of weeks back. And I'm not going to say anything more because it's a very end of the book and you'll know exactly what it is when you see it, Carrie. All right. Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent. So, so yes, um, Marvel is bringing back the Ultimate Universe for better or worse, and I've got to say, yeah. actually, pretty good. I'm enjoying it. It's different, and I appreciate that. That just going, we're going to just do the exact same thing we did before. Um, they've changed a lot of the characterizations and uh, how people are presented in this, and I appreciate that. Um, the Ultimate Black Panther is not your grandfather's Black Panther or your father's Black Panther, or even the one we grew up with. It is different. They make some changes, and they are honestly good. Oh, good. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how this how this story continues through. The Ultimate Spider-Man has been, you know, what happens if Peter Parker actually had a normal life and then had to become Spider-Man? Okay. And, and I, that's. 
I enjoyed the Ultimate uh, reboots. I I, re- I, I did read too. A, I read all of them. I thought yeah, they were I, I did too until Ultimates three came along, and I'm like, we're done here. And <laughs> here's, here's Ultimates three. Question: you know Why I share as well from Egg is this the same Ultimate universe or a new Ultimate universe? Yes. <laughs> All right. And that's honestly that is honestly the cor- the only answer I can give is yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you kind of have to read Ultimate Spider-Man one to understand why. Oh. Okay, all right, it explains it there. So oh. yeah, it explains it there. Um, Avengers Twilight, the world has gone to hell because of Tony Stark's kid, and the Avengers are trying to get it back together. Um, Tom Taylor and I have a love hate relationship because he <laughs> keeps deconstructing heroes. And I'm like, we, we don't need them deconstructed. He's not doing that with Nightwing, but I am loving his writing on this book. Um, he, he gets Dick Grayson. He gets the supporting characters. And, you know, he, he's a guy who gave Dick Grayson his dog Bitewing. So I can't, can't Bite really wing. argue there. Bite I love wing. it. Bitewing. Awesome. And Tom Taylor for the final. Um, this That's Wonder Woman story. It's a great cover. It's a fantastic cover. The story, again, I am it's unfolding as you read it because you really it's being told as a story to someone and so you're following along with this is what happened leading up to these events so you're still kind of getting your head around what's going on here but there's the the way that he choreographs um diana's actions throughout this has been this is what i expect from wonder woman that i've been missing for a long time in some of the writing and it's just been solid i mean I've, i'm i'm enjoying it and you also still get a, a backup feature with trinity uh, diana's daughter who we're not quite sure where she came from i think that's coming up in later issues but we're still getting um with the what they are showing you is her being babysat by damian wayne and john kent and they can't keep up with her who would and let, that is hilarious who would let damian wayne babysit anybody <laughs> apparently diana's like you can and my final thing is flamecraft so this is a game, we were trying to figure out something as a nice, fun family game. Mm-hmm. And so basically, you're a flame keeper who's in charge of uh, finding dragons to match with like medieval shops that they would be able to give, help craft things like you know a bakery or a potion shop or whatever. And the dragons have different um, abilities that allow you to do this. It is the, the interest, instructions are a little dense, uh, allow some time to, to go through them before trying to play the game rather than trying to do it as you're playing the game. Yeah. It works, but it's a little harder. Uh, we played a couple of games. It's fun. Uh, it's for ages 10 and up. Our girls love it because the dragons are cute and they have cute powers and abilities and the pictures are cute. It's fun because it's also just a, it's a uh, Sim City esque without all of the politics stuff it's just here's we're making shops and we're trying to get people in and trying to make cool. spells with them and what have you and it's a fun game by uh who's the company uh cardboard alchemy and lucky duck games All right. so flame strike it is available at uh your local game shop tony uh we we watched some cooking shows and uh the floor finished up this week with rob uh Rich Um <laughs> What's his Rob name? Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ended up not liking that one as much as I thought I would by the end of the season because the, the game they play, is it's pretty repetitive and doesn't require really any skill other than name what we show you on this screen. My kind kids of love thing. it. But, but I, I understand, you, I do get your yeah. point. I still enjoyed it all the way to the end, but the first two episodes, I was like, oh, this is a new awesome thing. And by the end of it, I was like, hey, it's okay. Um, and then my random, uh, movie from Hulu for the week to uh, Rebecca's gone. So she's not going to get to enjoy this, uh, review is, uh, the pod generation came out, I think last year on Hulu or maybe, no, maybe it was this year. It's got Amelia Clark and you'll have to forgive me for this poor pronunciation. Chiwetel. Chiwetel IGA4. IGA4. Chiwetel IGA4. And they play a couple uh, in the uh, distant, not too distant, sometime in the future where technology has advanced to the point where you can have a baby without having the wife carry the baby the whole time. Oh, so it's that's a baby the pod. in a pod. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can, you, can you strap a rocket engine onto it and ship it and send it to Earth so it avoids the destruction of the planet? You, 
No, because the pod can only stay undocked for 48 hours, unfortunately. You have well, to dock it every drive. 48 hours. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't land in Alabama. But that's okay. um, or Russia. But, yeah. Oh, Rebecca popped in. Uh, she's here in the comments. She wants to see the pod movie. I recommend checking it out. It is a slow burn, but it's interesting. Um, they uh, The movie really centers around those two characters more than anything, but they bring in some other characters um, along the way to kind of keep things uh moving without just focusing on those two but it was good i i i enjoyed it it's it's not you know anything that's gonna sit there and capture your attention 100 percent. but it was an interesting kind of take on what reproductive things would, could be like in the future and how we handle those kinds of changes and whatnot so all right i liked it okay it's like a fresh take on brave new world yeah yeah, yeah kind of yeah. Uh, I wasn't able to watch much stuff this week. It's been kind of a weird week, but uh, I did sit down and watch the first episode of that new Walking Dead show, the the Rick and Michonne Power Hour. Oh, I was going to say, which one? <laughs> Don't we have a couple new ones? <laughs> this one's called The Ones Who Lived. Okay. Or Live. I anyway. thought it was Have Machete Will Travel. That that would be a good title, <laughs> a better title. Uh, it's interesting to see these two back on the screen together. And I, you know, one issue, in, uh, one episode in, I can't really say, but uh, you know, uh, we'll okay, see so what Carrie, happens. As somebody who jumped ship on the franchise like six years ago, Ooh. would it be something you go? Oh, you can jump in here and be okay, or you could. They kind okay. of, uh, they kind of give you, a, you know, a lot of explanation as to why Rick is where he is and why Michonne is not there and. The fact they're looking for each other and all that. I jumped and it's, so uh, long ago, I still don't know if they left Herschel's farm. And it's uh, they, they did. <laughs> and it's great to see they Michonne did. back in action with the with the, you know, the samurai swords and all that mm -hmm. stuff, back out killing zombies and everything. It's yeah. great. Uh, Untamed so, Michonne. Yes. Uh, I also uh, rewatched, um, Infinity War and Endgame, just ah. because I was missing my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I thought, oh, okay, that's satisfying. And I realized that once Endgame was over, I had this just for a moment. For a moment, I had this thought, and then I then I stopped thinking this way because it's wrong. For a moment, I thought, is it the height of hubris for Marvel Cinema to keep going after this? Mm -hmm. Because you've done it all. I think we've all had those thoughts. Did, did everyone have that that thought for a yeah. minute? Because. Everything happened in those movies. Everything. Um, how do you go forward? I mean, I'm glad we did because, you know, we're getting Shang-Chi, we're getting Moon Knight, we get all that stuff. I'm glad we kept going. But boy, there's so much happening in these two movies. It's just like every, it's like every comic book you ever read is well, that's the That's the biggest problem is they created this high-level watermark that's just, you know, how are you going to get it back up there yeah. without another eight-year... Uh, build up, yeah. you know. Well, you, you made the greatest steakhouse in the world, and then when you're done, you're just serving really good burgers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The burger's <laughs> still fantastic, but when yeah, you compare it to the steak that you had a week occasionally ago, they bring out a fantastic steak, and you go, yeah. "Oh my god, this steak is fantastic!" Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yep, yep. I want I want steak all the time because yeah. we we were spoiled. Very mm -hmm. spoiled. Mm -hmm. Then finally, uh, on Max, there's a series called Jellystone which is all of your favorite Hanna-Barbera characters reimagined and made actually funny. <laughs> what? I know. Come on. What? Look, Hanna-Barbera cartoons never made me laugh out loud. Sorry. Yeah. Really? Oh, I agree. Yeah. I, I was never a big fan. I, you know, it's, it's is there something in the water here in Utah? It could be. I, could be. But Hanna-Barbera never... County. I enjoyed them and I watched them, but they never I made me laugh I watched them religiously, but it was, it was Tiny Toons. Or... Uh, uh, Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah I was Warner gonna Brothers say. Laughing. To me, I was always watching them, thinking, uh, "I wish this was a Warner Brothers cartoon." Yeah. <laughs> we, I watched them because that's what we had, you know. Yeah. So, well, anyway, I, I did enjoy Hong Kong Fooey, but only because number of one the superstar. Racism. But he's he's in this. All the characters are in this show, Jellystone, and what it is is it's obviously fans of these cartoons nice. are taking these players, like Huckleberry Hound, is the mayor of the town. You know, uh, and they they bring them in, and they're not necessarily the same voices. But I did watch an episode where Space Ghost, Brack, Zorak, and Moltar show up. 
Now, they haven't been on these shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did they get the original voice cast from Coast This is Coast? what I'm getting at. They got Andy Merrill back as Brack, which was great. Now, the guy who did Zorak, he's dead, so they couldn't bring him. Oh, they should have uh, brought him back anyway. Uh, the, guy, <laughs> the guy who does the Moltar voice is really close. He's really spot on. But the, the sad thing was George Lowe is Space Ghost. He's, getting a lot, he's gotten a lot older. Oh. And, you, and here's the sad part. You can hear his dentures. Oh no! Oh. So oh, it's no. just not the same, and he doesn't have the power that he yeah. had. You remember Maltar? You know he would be able it's to say it like the that. The force behind what he was saying. You can yeah. tell that he's gotten old, and mm. it's just—I mean—it was great to see that happen, and it was very funny because they go to a uh, like a comic book convention where Space Ghost is supposed to be making an appearance, but Peter Potamus steals the 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 bands that Space Ghost has and dresses up as Space Ghost. And everyone is fooled. <laughs> and what is this called again? Jellystone? Je Jellystone, okay. yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, kids will dig it and adults will dig it because it's these characters and callbacks and all this stuff. Really quick, because Warner Brothers does own um, the Hanna-Barbera properties now. Did you read... Oh, crap. DC did a series of comics called Future Quest. Uh, yes. About 10 years ago. I read those, yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that they were, that I was on your really radar. I really liked their Flintstones a lot. Oh, and that updated Flintstones was interesting, yeah. too, yeah. That was a different uh, well, thing. Yeah, it was a different print. Different, different, different print, but... I don't know what you're talking but about. But right. look up that Snagglepuss uh, I've heard good novel. things about that. I just haven't read it yet, because I heard it was oh, amazing satire. It is amazing. Snagglepuss, featured... as, as a Mark Twain-like gay playwright, uh, just, just amazing. Okay. Uh, I loved it. Anyway. So that's what we got. Games? Uh, not a whole lot coming out this week, but if you're into the wrestlings, you got WWE 2K24 coming out on Friday. And uh, everything else is pretty much a whole bunch of like uh, indie game stuff where if you've already been following it, then you're probably excited for whatever it is to come out. If you haven't heard of it, then you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, people are now listing Hanna Barbera characters. They're all there. They all show up on this show at one time or another. You know, I mean, they're the mainstays like Yogi and, you know, Doggy Daddy, and uh, the mainstays are there. The but Great Grape Ape. Grape Ape shows up. I mean, Jabberjaw yes. shows up. They all make an appearance you, here and there. So. Crazy Racers. Wacky. Yeah. Wacky or, Racers. Wacky Racers. Do Adult Pebbles and Bam Bam show up with their little rock band? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the first time. That was the first time I ever heard my uncle, who I always stayed with in the afternoons when my mom was working, and my uncle would let me watch cartoons. And then the the Pebbles and Bam Bam show came on, and I remember him getting up from his chair because his remote control, his clicker was out of batteries, and he said, "Jesus Christ, this garbage!" And then he turned it off. <laughs> How did you feel about yeah. the Partridge Family in space then? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. I, I don't know what's going on with Rebecca because she's in the comments, but she's not here. With oh, she's, <laughs> she has that other thing she's, she's going to down in uh, Utah County. Oh, oh that's, that's it. Remember, okay. she, well, she told us. So she won't be in the after show either. All right. She's well, actually she's stuck with us. She's meeting county representatives to see if we can finally broadcast Geek Show in Utah County. In Utah County? Never yeah. going to happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, join us on the after party. We're headed there in a few moments. Uh, it's geekshowgotthiscovered.com is the link to our uh, Patreon account, and it's all there. So thank you for being there. Live long and prosper, bitches. Bye.